morning. This is Arnie Waters here at Waters Capital in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, welcome to the world of uh, the United States. Over the next decade, we're going to see the United States vaulted to an even higher level of world prominence. This is due to the fact that there are a number of things that work out best for the United States um, and that enable it to face, enable us to uh, face and overcome catastrophe better than any other country or area in the world. Um, first of all, uh, we print our own money and uh, we have a unified nation state. By that I mean we speak with one voice internationally. I'm not putting aside, you know, like the governor of New Jersey can't decide that he doesn't want to participate in the Federal Reserve Program as much as Rick Perry would like for that to happen. Uh, but we have a unified currency and we have a unified uh, central bank with a responsibility to fight inflation. Secondly, compared to other countries, the United States is a relatively quick reactor to problems between executive and legislative uh, powers. Uh, we have a, a program that's outlined and the people are accustomed to dealing with for solving crises. Uh, next, we have vast natural resources. Uh, as I said yesterday, in fact, we already have on uh, in our possession uh, the capacity for energy independence as long as we get away from the frou-frou of solar power and wind power and get back to fundamentals that actual human beings can use, which is oil and gas, which we've got plenty of, and uh, we can address our own needs internally and get free from uh, Middle Eastern or African dominance in this area. Um, lastly, we're discovering, uh, lastly on this topic, we're discovering that the European area remains a, a loose confederation of fractured nation states and, and with a remarkable capacity for denial. Once again, this morning, the Europeans are taking this seriously, so the markets are going up. I got news for you. The New Europeans don't give a damn about Europe. The Europeans care about their own nation states. Uh, notice that when their banks needed to be bailed out the last time, that is when, um, uh, when we went through the first phase of the financial crisis, their banks came right into the United States to get money. They didn't get money from their own countries. So part of what I'm trying to suggest to you now is that the denial and the fractiousness of the European system uh, is going to be a very profound barrier to European uh, success in dealing with this and then further financial difficulties. Uh, and so we should be more focused on how we can make the United States do better uh, rather than uh, how we can solve the problems of the whole world. Now, I spoke a couple of months ago about China and Chinese demand slacking. Uh, we told you that in a, a rapidly growing consumer-based uh, ruling class kind of economy, uh, the, that the fact that people were cutting back on their purchases, uh, not of Rolls Royces, but <laughs> of BMWs and Mercedes, told you that there was a, a problem coming, and indeed it has arisen. A few months ago, we also pointed out to you uh, that the uh, danger of the return of Putin to power is great. And once again, he has called for, as he did a few months ago when we pointed this out to you, uh, he has called for some kind of pan-Asian, pan-Russian union. And he says it's not going to be like the Soviet Union. It's going to be something different and better. How about that? You know, Vladimir Putin is one of the smartest and wiliest operators there is. He sees that there is a pattern emerging that could be of great benefit to him and the Russians, and he eagerly sees that the return of the strong man and the centralized Soviet power could be on its way with a few deft moves on his part. So uh, we've got a lot of things going on in the world. We also want to point out to you, uh, and there will be a white paper coming out on frontier rare earths, but we want to point out to you that there's significance of you know, the heavy rare earths, which we lectured about most of last winter. These heavy rare earths are vital to the production of a lot of cool stuff that is growing in, uh, in, in, in demand. And, uh, you know, if you look back at some of our white papers, you will see specific detail on heavy rare earths. But the, uh, the announcement that Molly Corp has 
uh, has actualized a heavy rare earth element was key in stopping the slide of that stock. So we're encouraging you to realize that the largest heavy rare earth element uh, discovery outside of China is actually in property owned by Frontier Rare Earths. So FRO on Toronto trading about a buck. Uh, we see this uh, being a $2 stock by the spring. This is Arnie Waters. Aim for the ice flows, not the open water. Keep swinging.